Welcome to the sixth problem in the Computer Science 121 2013 Winter 2 final exam practice. This is lab circuits. Consider the following <laughs> big nasty looking circuit. Uh, assume that all of the flip-flops, so here's two flip-flops, all the flip-flops start with the value 0, uh, so I'll just write that in. All the flip-flops start with a value 0. Assume that input is a sequence of bits provided by the user. So this is a sequence of bits provided by the user. And that the clock ticks each time a new bit is available. So the clock ticks each time we've got a new bit available on input. So it's, it's very uh, cooperative. And when the user puts in a 1, the clock ticks. We get to register that 1. Uh, understand what it means in terms of the circuit, um, everything updates in its state, and we move on to the next bit of input. I give three different input sequences of different lengths that all lead to outputs of one. All right, so we need to start understanding the circuit. Uh, nothing was said about this reset thing. It leads into the zero inputs of the D flip-flop. So when someone switches reset here, uh, these are going to return to state zero, zero. So that's probably why we were told to assume that the flip-flops start with value zero, zero. For this particular circuit, that's kind of our start state. OK. And here's an output over here. Um, we've got a NOR gate leading into the output. And let's see what's connected to that. We've got the right-hand flip-flop. I'll just label this R and L so we can refer to them as the R and L flip-flops. The R flip-flop here is leading to the NOR, and the L flip-flop is also leading to the NOR. So this is going to be true exactly when these are both false, because that's the only time when this OR will produce 0, and then it's going to be inverted to a 1. So 0, 0 we're going to give an output of true, and for anything else, we'll give an output of false. OK. <clears throat> what else do we have here? Um, we've got these two gates here. These are both exclusive OR gates. So remember that A exclusive OR B is true exactly when A is true and B is false, or A is false and B is true. So exactly one of the two is true. And then we've got the input leading into this XOR, and the negated input leading to this one. I'm just going to make a note of that for myself. Negated input. This is input. Q here also leads back around here. So this is Q right. Uh, and it doesn't connect to the input to this one. Uh, it does connect to its own input through this XOR gate. We should expect that in a sequential circuit. We should expect this sort of feedback. But uh, it doesn't connect to this one. This leads back to here. So this is QL right here. And again, this one doesn't connect to that one's input. So we could actually think about these completely separately. Uh, and that's probably worth doing. And then we just have to be aware that we only get an output of 1 if these are both in state 0. So let's just pay attention to the right one here, because the right one has fewer tangled looking wires on it. It's a little cleaner to look at. And let's figure out just what the right one means, and not worry at all what the left one means. So we could actually draw a little teeny DFA for the right one only. Um, it's only going to have two states, right? Because there's only one bit here. So the only possible states are a 0 or a 1. So let's just make this the right DFA. And we decided uh, <clears throat> we decided it starts in state 0 already. OK, so on an input of 0, starting in state 0, where do we go? Uh, well, we've got a 0 coming in here. We've got a 0 coming in here. Exclusive OR is only true when exactly one of these is true. And they're both false. So this will be false. So on a 0, we're just going to uh, stay where we are. And on a 1, <clears throat> this is a 1. We've got a 0 here. And so 0 XOR 1, that's going to be 1. And so we're going to end up in state 1 on a 1. OK, so now we're in state 1. Well, let's, just, let's just draw that in here so we can remember that easier. We're in state 1. 
We've got a 1 coming around here, so if input's a 0, then exactly one of these is 1, and so we'll have an output of 1. So we're going to stay where we are on a 0. And on a 1, input is 1, and the state is also 1. That's two ones, not exactly one 1. So this output will be 0, and we'll go back. Okay, so what is this actually doing? Uh, well, we need to know what our accepting state is, and we said we need both of these things to be 0 for this to be 1, so I'm going to think of this as the accepting state. It doesn't mean that the whole circuit output's true, it just sort of means this side gives us what we want, but it's the closest thing we have to a reasonable accepting state. So what is this actually doing? stays here on 0, on one it goes here, on another one it comes back, on another one it goes here, another one it comes back. So every other one, we come back here. If we've got had 0 ones, we're in an accepting state. If we've had 2, we're in an accepting state. If we've had 4, we're in an accepting state, and so on and so forth. Zeros don't really have any effect, they just leave us where we were. So this is, um, this is counting up ones. So what we're really doing here is um, we have number of ones is odd, is kind of the meaning of this. So if this is true, if this is one, then we've seen one one, or we've seen three, or five, or seven, or nine. And if this is false, then we've seen zero ones, or two, or four, or six, or eight. Okay, so now we can look at the other side. And, uh, this has got input and QR here, this has got not input and QL, so we can expect these will be similar. Let's go ahead and work through them. There's only one bit on this side as well, so we're going to have a zero, and we already decided zero is going to be our accepting state, and it's going to be our start state, and we're going to have a one. So when we're over here, this is zero, we get a zero as input, then this is one, right, because this is the negation of the input. So we've got a 0 coming in here, a 1 coming in here, we'll have a 1 as the new state. So 0 is going to lead us across there. And when we have a 1, the negation of that 1 is going to be 0. And we have a 0 here, 0 x or 0 is 0, and so we'll just stay in state 0. Okay, now let's put ourselves in state 1, so we can figure out what happens there. And notice, by the way, everything I'm doing here is kind of the opposite of what we did when we took a DFA and translated it to a circuit. Okay, so I'm in state 1. We get a 0 as input, so this is a 1. 1 XOR 1 is 0, because it's not the case that exactly one of these is 0. This is where this differs from OR. So we're going to get 0 as the new state uh, when we have 0 as input. And when we have 1 as input, then this is 0, this is 1, 0 XOR 1 is 1. Oh, hold on, <laughs> I labeled that 0. Uh, well, this is supposed to be 1. Was this also supposed to be 1? So 1 gives us a 0. We had a 0 here, 0 XOR 0 is 0. Yeah, that should have been on a 1. Let me stay there. Okay, good. It's important that every state has one arc for every input. And I had two arcs for one input, that's not allowed. And I was lacking an arc for another input, that's not allowed either. So that was a broken DFA. Uh, but, you know, otherwise this looks just like this one, except we've swapped the inputs. So we've got zeros keeping us where we are here. Here we've got ones keeping us where we are. We've got ones transitioning across, across here. Here we've got zeros transitioning across. So this is exactly the opposite sense of this one. This one was calculating the number of ones is odd. We're calculating the answer to that question. This is calculating the answer to the question of number of zeros is odd. Okay, so now I need three different input sequences of different lengths that all lead to outputs of one, and this is only going to work, I'm only going to get true out here, when both of these have zero as their state. So when the number of ones is not odd, and the number of zeros is not odd. So number of ones is even, number of zeros is even. Um, so that's easy, I can easily give uh, a bunch that are like that. The empty string works. Because in the empty string we start here and here, that's okay. Um, zero, zero will work because we'll just go toot toot over here and here we'll just stay here. 
So that'll work. Um, let's do something more interesting. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. That ought to work, right? Because there's two zeros and there's four ones. So over here, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 keeps us there. Over here, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 keeps us there. So that ought to work as well. And anything with an even number of ones and an even number of zeros. OK, give an input and a state for the circuit, a bit stored by the left flip-flop, a bit stored by the right flip-flop, such that when the clock ticks, both flip-flops change their stored values, or explain why no such input and state exists. So let's see when they change their stored values. This one keeps its stored value on a 1, changes its stored value on a 0. This one keeps its stored value on a 0, changes its stored value on a 1. So that's actually never going to happen because, let's see, no such input state exists because uh, the left D flip flop uh, changes state exactly on input of one while the right changes exactly on input of zero. Okay, briefly explain in English the meaning of the left flip-flop's value. We already did that. I can just, uh, in fact, I'm just going to circle that and say C. So the left flip-flop calculates whether the number of zeros is odd. So that's the answer to that question. C. <laughs> Not that kind of C. C. Above. Okay. Briefly explain the meaning of the right flip flops. C. Above. And I'll go back up and circle that. So this is the answer to D. What the circuit does, uh, well, we already said um, we need both flip-flops to be zero, so we need there to not be an odd number of zeros, not be an odd number of ones. In other words, produce is true, or one, exactly when the input sequence has an even number of ones and an even number of zeros. Okay, modify the circuit so that it outputs one exactly when the number of ones input to the circuit is divisible by four. Well, um, that's not so different from what we're already doing, right? So this produces one exactly with the input sequence has an even number of ones and an even number of zeros. Here we want to, uh, instead of thinking about dividing by two, which is essentially what even means, we want to think about dividing by four. So it's probably going to be a somewhat similar circuit. So let's see if we can build it. Um, I think I'm just going to design this from scratch. I know I'm going to have four states, right? I'm going to have divisible by four, and then I'm going to have one more than that, and one more than that, which is two more than divisible by four, one more than that, which is three more than divisible by four, and then one more than that takes me back to divisible by four. So I'm just going to have four states. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and design this as a DFA, and then we can turn that DFA into a circuit fairly easily. So I'm going to put these in a circle because I know on a 1, 
I'm just going to go around this circle. This will be my accepting state because I'll be divisible by four. Zeros don't matter. I'm only counting ones here. So zeros are just going to keep me where I am. Okay. So uh, I need enough bits. I can just look at my instructions on how to lay out a circuit. So I recommend that you do that. Pull out those steps on how to lay out a circuit to implement a DFA. Uh, but I recall that we're going to lay out enough D flip-flops to store the state and we need, well we have four states, so we need enough bits to represent four values. That's two bits. So I'm going to need two D flip-flops. This one on top here is going to be maybe my uh, twos place. And this one on bottom is going to be my ones place. So when this is one and this is zero, I'll have one, two, zero, ones. I'll be in state two. <clears throat> okay. So on a one, then we change to here. On a one, we change to here. One, we change to here. What's what's my next step here? I'm going to wire these up with clocks, but I won't do that yet because that might get really messy. Uh, I've got my outputs here, Q and Q. I'm going to wire those to somewhere. Uh, and I do want these both to be zero, so I'm going to have a NOR as my output, just like on the one above there. But I, I'm not going to wire this up yet either, because I don't want to lay out my wires until I have a better sense about what's going to be in here. Okay. And we said we're always going to have a multiplexer for each of... The D flip flops. We didn't use a multiplexer above, but we might as well follow our pattern here. So I have a multiplexer here, feeding back into this one, and we'll just have the two states control those multiplexers. So I'm going to have one of them go here, and one go here, and then I'm going to have the other one go here and also go there. Okay, so these will be states 0, 1, 2, and 3 from the top. 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. And I need my input. And my input's what I'm going to use to control those multiplexers. Okay, I guess I can put my clock in now because it's pretty clear how that's going to work. So I'll just wire it direct to there and then I'll also connect it to here. Okay, now on a zero everything stays where it is. On a one it changes. Oh boy, maybe I should have my input control these multiplexers because on a zero the state just stays the same. But I won't worry about that. I'll, I'll do it the way that we described in class. So if we're in state zero, then where do we go next? Well, on a zero we go to zero, zero. On a one we go to zero, one. So the, the left bit, the twos place, is always a zero no matter what. And the bottom bit is just connected to the input. So let me see if I can get this across here without making a huge mess. There we go. Okay, so if I'm in state one, on a zero I stay where I am. On a one I go to state one zero. So I go to uh, zero one on a zero. You know what, let me relabel these in binary. It's gonna be a little easier to do if I do that. So I'm having trouble keeping track of the binary values, which is what I really need to calculate these. So this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so on a 0, I go to 0, 1. On a 1, I go to 1, 0. So <clears throat> the left bit is a 1 if the input is 0, and a 0 if the input is 1, and the right bit is a 0 if the input is 0, and a 1 if the input is 1. So the right bit, the right bit is uh, the negation of the input. So I'm going to connect this across with an inverter, and the left bit, oops, let me make sure I put 
a dot there, so I know that we're uh, sending that wire in both directions. The left bit is just the same as the input. So I'm going to feed the input into the left bit. OK. Now, in state 2, state 1, 0. On a 0, I stay where I am. On a 1, I go over here. So on a 0, I'm at 1, 0. On a 1, I'm at 1, 1. The left bit is easy. It's just always 1. The right bit is 0 on a 0, 1 on a 1. So it's just the input. So that's pretty easy, too. OK. And finally, if I'm in this state right here, on a 0, I'm at state 1, 1. On a 1, I'm at state 0, 0. So both bits are the same, and they're both the negation of the input. So I would like to negate the input here. And I would also like to negate the input there. So there we go. Uh, now, I still haven't connected up my output. I want this to be true when they're both 0. So I just need to grab the two cues here, the two output values, and loop them around to there. So let me just grab them from here, where they're nice and close to the output. Grab this one too. And there we go.